Hey, what is up guys? Alex here from Technoclass.com, and uh, who misses this, huh? The classic unbox and talk now with two cameras. Well, sort of. Uh, we're, today we're unboxing the Asus Zenfone Max Plus. Now, because there's so many words in that model name, they couldn't fit Asus in the box. Oh no! Oh, there's Asus over there. We love photo over here. This is the newest uh, phone from Asus. Their first a new phone for 2018. And this is a interesting new phone price at 11,995. Has an 18 by nine ratio display. So without further ado, let's get this out of the box. All right, let's see what we have here. Obviously it's a nice, interesting squarish box, a squarish rectangular box, a silicone case for the phone right here you can sort of see the silhouette of the phone and here is the phone itself the charger does 5 volts 2 amps so relatively fast but not super super fast charging we have a usb uh, type a micro uh, otg cable hey remember this remember this when this was super exciting and everyone did otg on their phones ha huh. <laughs> times have changed we have a 3.5 millimeter headset here because the phone has the 3.5 millimeter jack still and we have some earbuds so there is what's inside the box let's turn on the phone and see what's in that one All right, guys, so here it is, the Zenfone Max Plus M1. A, uh, as you can see, the 18 by 9 ratio display is very, very uh, visible here. I've already set it up to my liking. All the apps and stuff is already there. You can see that most of the front or the phone itself is covered by the screen, though there is a bezel here on the bottom, and of course, there's a little bezel up top. So you do have the chin and you do have the little, you know, forehead there's also a little bit of bezels uh, to the left and to the right so this is not necessarily the least bezeled phone in the world however the screen is very nice and uh, you do get a nice uh, feeling phone in the hand as you can see the screen also or at least the uh, glass on top is very very nice looking i believe that's gorilla glass 5 and as you can see when you turn off the display it is a nice gorgeous black phone there's with not, not a lot on it uh, except for the you know cameras on top and stuff like that so this does unlock with a face unlock and i'm i'm not exactly fond of that because obviously uh it's a apple feature that a lot of people are trying to capture uh, to copy um you know it's face unlock has been around for a while and i'm trying to face unlock. there we go so that's one thing however this still has a fingerprint scanner on the back and as you can see there's a lot of fingerprints on the phone uh so that does pick up fingerprints as well however the phone itself looks really nice in my opinion it does look high end for the price that you're paying for here this is 12,000 pesos 11,995 and i have no complaints with the design the display here is i believe an ips 2160 by 1080 if i'm not mistaken yes 2160 by 1080 5.7 inch display so we're getting a big display here but the phone itself is not hard to hold because the screen is bigger this way not this way so it's a very nice design i do like it so let's get into the parts of the phone quickly here we have the uh, 5.7 inch 2160 by 1080 display in front we have a 8 megapixel front facing camera right there so one thing that is to note you know the capacity buttons are now off the, on the screen uh, and the one thing that is questionable here is what is this bottom bezel doing when the capacity buttons are on the screen anyhow so that's one thing to note there's a big chin right there but uh, aside from that we have the uh, proximity light sensitivity sensitivity sensor up there and as the speaker grill the microphone is inside one of these grills though so aside from the front of course we have the sides here is the uh, the sim tray and i believe this is a three slot tray which is a very nice thing to have because a lot of brands are using hybrid trays as you can see that is some crazy amount of trays right there 
three trays, SIM SIM, and a micro SD card. On the bottom, we have uh, some uh, speakerphone speakers and a micro USB port for charging and data transfer. On the right side, we have a power button and a volume rocker, pretty standard here. Uh, the texture is not different. However, you can easily feel which one is small, which one is big. On top, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the noise cancellation microphone. The sides are very nice to the hand. They're curved or they're sort of, uh, you know, circular. So as you can see right there, it is curved there and it's very easy to hold. Now on the back, we've seen this before. We have two cameras on the back. One is a regular angle. I'm not really sure which one is. Uh, I'm gonna bet it's this one. And that's a 16 megapixel, no image stabilization camera. So the secondary rear camera is 120 degrees, eight megapixel, no optical image stabilization. You get the LED flash right here. And of course you get the standard fingerprint scanner. Now, in my opinion, 100%, you should just go for the fingerprint scanner. I've been messing with the face unlock feature for a little bit while I was setting it up. And there's a lot of uh, points of failure here. Um, and I, I could give it more trial, uh, but uh, honestly, I'd say it's about a 75% success rating, especially since you have to be at a right angle or a right, you know, about the foot from your phone. And I usually unlock my phone long before I put a I put my face next to it so it's a little bit awkward you know it's kind of like it's because Apple made the app uh, the face unlock in vogue again unfortunately you know Apple does have a more advanced face unlock with IR sensing thingamajigs that is much more sophisticated than your typical smartphone anyway let's talk about the back here we have a metal back there's some antenna cuts on the top and bottom very standard Android design here. Um, it does finger pick up fingerprints quite a bit. There's an Asus logo on the bottom and uh, that's about it. I think it looks pretty nice though. I do say, keep saying that I do like the Zenfone 3 design quite a bit more than this, especially since this looks a little bit industrial uh, compared to the one to the Zenfone 3, which looks more luxurious. Anyway, that is the design of the phone. Let's get to the user interface in just a bit. All right, so the user interface of the Zenfone Max Plus is very stock-ish, or, you know, at least the navigation is very stock. I actually added that uh, app drawer right there because I'm used to having a button, the app drawer. But it does actually have the swipe up gesture for the app drawer. Otherwise, it is a very stock-like uh, build of Android. There are some customizations, like I said, you know, the pull-down menu is still very Zen UI. This is a new breed of Zen UI, though, Zen UI 4.0, and I do have to admit, they do they did remove a lot of the bloatware from Zen UI 3.0 and thank God for that obviously the uh, the interface is smooth however because this is powered by a MediaTek 6750T processor we're not going to get super buttery smooth frame rates here we're still we're scrolling around i would say around 40 fps here and uh app loading times is a little uh a little bit not the fastest in my opinion as you can see we're just switching apps here um, and uh, this is the typical social media stuff that I normally use and uh, it is you know not not the fastest when it comes to switching apps here we're using the default uh, animations here on Zen UI so as you can see it is not the fastest UI in the world as you can see scrolling on this uh, Google now um, feed is a little slow and going back to Facebook is a little s slow it's not the slowest product in the world it's not the slowest UI in the world and the UI is very optimized in my opinion however it is running on a 6750 MediaTek processor and that is limiting our frame rates here especially for example on this uh, Google Now feed however the interface is nice I have to give them that I would not complain if this was the interface on my main phone. It's just, you know, a little bit slower because of the MediaTek processor. So 42,000, 
42, I think 46 or something like that. It's not very high, but you know, it's okay. Let's try it out on some games. All right, guys, so uh, we're gonna test out NBA 2K17 on this guy. And as you can see, the speakers are on this side and I can cover it up if I want to. I'm gonna lower the volume just so we don't get any copyright issues. And here is the video settings we're gonna try it on right now. I think this is pretty much the lowest settings you can get. This is not bad so far. Uh, which one is the... Which one? Okay. Uh, it's running at a decent frame rate here. Playable enough. It drops a little bit, but it's not too bad. If you're playing at the lowest settings here, uh, it doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world. It actually is smooth. It can hit... Oh, that dropped a little bit. It seems to be hitting 60 FPS a little bit a few times. Uh, but generally it's in the vicinity of maybe high 50s. All right, let's try it with these settings right now And I can't get to clot simulation to turn on. Maybe that's never on. So we're at a pretty high settings right now Let's do a quick game All right, here we go. I'm getting a little bit of frame skip here Let's get that jump ball going Why well, I never get that jump ball done. Uh, I never win that jump ball. I don't understand frame skips. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's still not bad, but it's definitely you're definitely gonna lose if you play like if you have a frame rate like this. Oh my god! I thought, oof, oof! I can't see what's going on with the game. We got two points though. Very very framey. Uh, I would say this is in the twenties, uh, in the twenty FPS, maybe less. It's definitely choppy. So I'm not gonna play it like this. But it's, it gives you an idea of what the, uh, the system is capable of, at least for 2K17. All right, we're about to play a demanding game here, GTA San Andreas. I'm not going to touch the settings, but you can see the settings right there. That's, I believe, default settings. We are doing maybe less than 30 FPS here, or around 30, maybe sub 30 here. Uh, it is raining and there are a lot of cars. This is a pretty good test though. And I've been doing this test on a lot of phones. So it's it's a pretty good way to see how it performs. Let's bring up the brightness here because it's a, it's, a, it's a dark scenario. It's definitely not 60 frames per second. This is the default. So it defaults to this. Ooh, the rain is really cramping our style here. It's playable. It's playable. I'm not sure if you have like 10 cops in, uh, you know, chasing you, but this is not bad. I would lower the quality a little bit if I were to just play this. Let me lower the volume here. I would lower the quality a little bit. Oh, there are some gangs and some cops over here. Get out of the car, bro. I got a samurai sword. Yeah, this is sub 30 FPS. You, you can lower the settings. But that gives you a decent idea of the capabilities of this phone so far. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's not the worst. It's an entry-level processor and you get entry-level performance. You can play games no problem. It's just not going to be the fastest at it. All right, I haven't used this in a while. Let's see. The temperature here is 38.9, 38.7, 38.4, 37. Eh. Not bad, the temperatures are okay. We are in an air-conditioned room. Looks like we're getting 38.7 degrees. Oh, maximum is 39.2 apparently, somewhere. Can get warm, but definitely not, you know, not gonna burn your hand or anything. It does get warm though. All right, so let's take a look at the camera app here and the camera itself. As you can see, there are some filters over there. You can do some settings right here. They made it simplified a little bit, but also there's a lot of options still. You can change your resolution and stuff like that and do other stuff. There's a pro mode as well. Uh, you can do selfies. Obviously, this has two lenses in the back. So there's a regular sensor, which is this one. There we go. And the wide angle sensor is this one. And then we can also do selfies, which do not have wide angle or anything. It's just regular, pretty wide, however, sensor right here. And of course, there are beautification modes. There is a very high, uh, you know, in-depth beautification here. You can uh, change your makeup settings, your, your eye settings and stuff like that. Or it's also an app called uh, the 
Selfie Master, which is very interesting because it has a Beauty Live app. And if you want to go live stream with beautification on, if you're kind, of, if you if you want that a little bit of extra self-esteem when live streaming, you can turn on the beautification on yourself while live streaming to social networks like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, guys. So I think that's about it for a bit of a thorough hands-on and uh, first impressions of the Asus Zenfone Max Plus. 2160 by 1080, 18 by 9 display is very nice. I do like the design, except for the back. A little bit industrial on the back, in my opinion. A little bit of sort of ruggedness and whatnot. Uh, but it does have the two lenses. It does have the 8 megapixel selfies. Lots of features. UI is pretty good. It's not the smoothest UI in the world, and uh, it's not you know it's not the best processor in the world as well. Uh, but it does the job, and it can play games. And the cameras are need to be experimented upon a little bit more. It's a 4,135 milliamp hour battery, if I'm not mistaken. So it should last quite a bit, even with the MediaTek processor. Looking forward to review this, but for now that is it for our unboxing and. Uh, somewhat detailed hands-on. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!